Hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to 4 Strategy Gaming. Today we will be taking a look at a Terran strategy. Specifically, we're going to be looking at responding to your opponent's build. We talk about being responsive in StarCraft and just in RTSs in general so often, but I wanted to take a look kind of at a prime example of it. In this game, we're going to be taking a look at Z Next 1 and the opponent here is Grubby. So you can see Grubby here is our Protoss opponent and Z Next 1 is the Terran player we're going to be focusing on. So yes, so often we talk about being responsive and being able to adapt to what your opponent is doing, but this is a great example in Xenex 1 ends up opening up with a 2 racks, which is kind of standard. In fact, uh, one of my favorite builds in the TVP matchup is 2 racks into quick expansion, and that may very well be what Xenex 1 was planning on doing in this game. But what ends up happening is he checks his opponent's base, sees a very fast nexus, a quick, quick expansion, which isn't all that uncommon on this map on these larger maps uh, t tends to happen quite frequently nowadays and in seeing that he decides I'm gonna be very aggressive I'm going to push out with a few Marines and Marauders early game and a couple of SCVs so here we go, I'm going to slow this on down right now. We can see SCV Scout moving in, spotting the fact that the gateway isn't finished. He's already seen the, the Nexus at the expansion coming in, and this tells him, wow, very quick expansion from my Protoss opponent. As such, I should be aggressive. He was either going to decide I'm going to be aggressive or I'm going to fast expand. The fact that the expansion is just about to pop here for Grubby, we can see right now it has finished in fact, and the fact that, you know, if if Xenex1 had decided to come up with an expansion himself, he would have still been behind economically of Grubby because of the fact that his expansion got up quicker. So what our Terran player decides to do as a response is just push out. And we can see how strong this aggressive can be and how difficult it will be for a Protoss opponent to defend against it if you attack at the proper timing. So what is this proper timing going to be? Well, you want to make sure a couple of a couple of things. You want to make sure that you have enough offensive units to actually do damage, and you also want to make sure that they don't get to take advantage of their expansion. And what we will see in particular is that Xenex One pushes out at around 5:30 game time. That's when he actually um, is moving out to his opponent's base and moving out as well with a couple of SCVs. This is what allows him to do enough damage to actually hurt his opponent to the point where he can't recover. So as we can see here, pushing out right now with uh, about four or five Marines and one Marauder, and he's got some more units streaming on down as well. Before we actually go into this push, though, I do want to talk about the opening build order. Uh, as mentioned before, it's, it's pretty much just a standard two racks and could possibly be transitioning into a two rack quick expansion. Uh, but let's just pause momentarily and take one look at the build order. The build order was a 10 depot, 12 barracks, 13 refinery, 16 orbital command. Then after that first Marine built out of the barracks, attaching the reactor there that was at 16 supply as well and also dropping your second barracks at 16 supply then as soon as the second barracks finishes dropping the tech lab obviously double marines will be coming out of the barracks with the reactor marauders coming out of the barracks with the tech lab and then right away starting that concussive shell now the expansion was spotted and immediately the response that we saw from xenex one is moving out with a couple marines the first marauder that he has and then streaming out additional units to his opponent's base so I'm going to pick it up right now, and what we will see from this point forward is continuous production here. You can see the SCVs are still coming out, the Marines and Marauders are still coming out, the two barracks are rallied to his opponent's base for this aggression, and then he's also starting that stim pack research. So what will happen, and this is a key component here, pulling out with these SCVs does a couple of things. It provides that buffer, as you can see here, but it also allows you to get up a bunker. And if you can get up a bunker, you're pretty much guaranteed to uh, take out this expansion if you're actually allowed to build this up. Um, within range of actually being able to move in and out and pop out to do damage and actually drop the Nexus. So we're going to see here Xenex 1 moving out, doing damage, trying to target fire down that Nexus while there are no offensive units within range of his. Uh, you may be wondering why does Grubby not push out with what he has? Well the main reason of course is because he spent so many resources early on in this Nexus he just doesn't have the army size to deal with this. He eventually will. He eventually will be able to warp in enough units that he can defend what your push is actually moving out with. 
But the big thing again is you need to move out and be aggressive before they can take advantage of that expansion. Had Xenex 1 waited 1, maybe even 2 more minutes, then he actually would have been in a lot of trouble because at that point Grubby would have been taking advantage of those extra resources from his expansion rather than losing the 400 dumped into it and not having any gain from it and he would have been able to easily warp in and defend enough units to prevent you from killing off the expansion. But moving out at around the 5 minute mark between 5 and 6 minutes as soon as you spot that super fast expansion is going to allow you to do incredible amounts of damage. And then during all this push, gonna pause one more time here, what we saw was once more continuous production here of the Marines and Marauders continuous SCV production and then that stim pack research started but at the same time you keep up constant production and the second you have those extra 400 resources while you're still producing Marines, you're still producing Marauders and SCVs, once you have those extra resources go ahead and drop an expansion of your own and this will allow you to this push will eventually be defeated if your protest opponent knows what they're doing. The push will eventually be stopped, but it will allow you to then take advantage of your expansion and the fact that you dropped their expansion uh, made them lose all of those units, probably kill off a bunch of probes and, and his army as well, will put you at a tremendous advantage. And that's exactly what we see Xenex1 do in this game. Let me fast forward just a little bit more. You can see, obviously, as mentioned, Grubby eventually will be able to mop this up, uh, given the long distance for reinforcements and the fact that he can warp in right inside of his main base uh, means that you can't keep up this aggression to actually break him forever but you can do enough damage to put him so severely behind there's really no chance he can recover if you do the steps mentioned. If you keep up that constant marine marauder production, keep up constant SCV production, and once you have those extra resources, go ahead and drop your expansion. So we can see Grubby doing the wise thing, moving out for a counterattack. Our Terran player here dropping some bunkers for easy defense, but being able to snipe off a few of those units from the high ground was enough to just force Grubby to call the GG. So once more, I'll just take a look at this opening build order that we saw Xenex 1 open up with. It was a fairly standard two racks opening with a reactor first, then tech lab, going heavy marine with marauders with concussive shells. The opening build order was 10 depot, 12 barracks, 13 refinery, 16 orbital command. First marine finishes, you put a reactor on that first barracks, then you start your second barracks. Once the second barracks finishes, tech lab goes on that, start concussive shells, continuously pump out those marines and those marauders. If you are on a fairly large map, some another crucial part of this is being on a map that has a wide opening because with a small narrow opening, they can get out in early century to force field you out. But if you have a wide opening like we do on this particular map and you spot that fast expansion, if you can keep up that marine marauder production, pull down some SCVs with you, you can see how much damage you're able to do. Grubby losing that expansion, losing a bunch of his workers there as well. And then keep up that production, keep it non-stop. As soon as you have those extra resources, drop your expansion. These two things combined will put you in a tremendous position and should win you the game. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed the content. As always, if you do like the commentary, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep watching and keep owning.